Joe King walks out on stage and says, Hello, yes, my name's Joe King. I'm not joking, though I prefer to be called Juris Dr. King. King takes a piece of paper out of his pocket and says, I thought we would do another mailbag as I had so much fun with the last one. The following message is from Brandon from Florida who writes, Saturday Not Alive is painfully unfunny and offensive to those who have passed. Please stop making them. King crumbles up the paper and says, First of all, genius, I have stopped making them if the cast is currently on strike. Okay, but I plan on making them again once the strike is over, so I'll answer this message substantively. The Saturday Not Alive episodes are not offensive to those who've gone before us, as instead they are honoring them. Right, Chris Farley? Chris Farley comes out on stage. Applause, applause, applause. Farley. Right, Juris Dr. King? King. Great, now get the hell out of here. Farley waves and walks off stage. King. Anyway, as you just heard Chris Farley agree, Saturday Not Alive does not offend the dead. It honors them. But what really grinds my gears about Brandon's email is that he said Saturday Not Alive is painfully unfunny. When I first read this, I thought, how sensitive do you have to be for something to be painfully unfunny? Painfully unfunny. If something's not funny, usually that just means it didn't make you laugh. But this guy, Brandon, is put in pain and has to go to the fucking ER from merely listening to a sketch featuring dead former SNL cast members. But then I realized that that sort of opinion is going to manifest itself on occasion because Saturday Night Alive is a very smart comedy. My handful of loyal listeners are very smart understand it, and get the humor in our presumably pain-free. Among the dead, Albert Einstein, a former host, is a huge fan and understands the humor and is pain-free. I'll admit that sometimes SNA is such a smart comedy that even I don't understand it. But with Saturday Night Alive being such a smart comedy, there's always going to be people like Brandon who just aren't very smart and therefore aren't going to understand or appreciate it. But I cannot let the existence of people who aren't smart, like Brandon, dissuade us from presenting such smart comedy. I just don't want to cause those dopes any pain. So as a PSA, if listening to this hurts you, stop listening, okay, genius? In any event, I want the strikes to end soon so we can try to show how smart SNA is again. And who knows, maybe we'll occasionally dumb it down for the likes of Brandon in Florida, if only to keep them out of the ER. Okay, enough with the mailbag crap. Norm McDonald wanted to come out and tell a joke. Norm? Norm McDonald walks out on stage. Applause, applause, applause. McDonald. Kevin Spacey was found not guilty in London at his sexual assault trial, you know? Therefore, it's open season again for gay men to have wild, crazy sex with Kevin without fear of any assault. Joe? King. Thanks, Norm. McDonald. I have another one. King. Another joke? McDonald. That's right. You know? Kevin Spacey celebrated his legal victory by going to a gay strip club. And it was reported that he was very respectful of the performers, as there were no reported sexual assaults. Okay. Okay, great. Thanks, Norm. McDonald. I actually have one more. Okay. Okay, let's hear it. McDonald. O.J. Simpson joined Kevin Spacey outside the London courthouse after the legal victory, and O.J. personally promised to help Kevin find the real sexual assaulter. Okay. Okay, Norm McDonald, everybody. Applause, applause, applause. McDonald and King walk off stage, and King walks onto another stage, sits in a seat behind a desk, and says, Please welcome to the program the recently departed comedic actor, best known for his portrayal of Pee Wee Herman, Paul Rubin. Paul Rubens, dressed as Pee Wee Herman, emerges from behind the curtain and enthusiastically waves at the audience as he does his Pee Wee Herman dance. Applause, applause, applause. Rubens walks over and sits at a seat next to King's desk. King, welcome to the show, Paul. 
Rubens. Ball? Who's ball? I'm Pee Wee. <laughs> Jay, are you serious, Paul? You just died. Typically, I go through the life story of my guests. Rubens, you keep calling me Paul, but my name's Pee Wee. <laughs> Jay, uh, look, I of all people get it, okay? I'm to Tom Murphy what Pee Wee Herman is to Paul Rubens. Rubens, I don't know what you're talking about. King, uh, I don't know how we're going to do this, but let's see. Okay, you were born Paul Rubenfield in 1952 to Judy and Milton Rubenfield, a Jewish couple who owned a lamp store. Rubens, I don't know who these Rubenfield people are, but boy, do I sure love lamps. <laughs> Rubens takes out a lamp from under his seat, and as he turns it on and off, says, I'm up. I'm off. <laughs> As Rubens throws the lamp behind him that breaks into pieces, King says, Okay, I'm just going to go through Paul's life briefly, if you don't mind, Pee-wee. Rubens. You got it. <laughs> King. Okay. As a child, he frequently attended Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, which sparked his interest in entertainment and his later work. After high school, where he was president of the National Thespian Society, he attended Boston University before being accepted to the California Institute of the Arts. Rubens. Arts rhymes with farts. <laughs> okay. Very good, Pee-wee. Paul then started performing at comedy clubs in California before joining the Groundlings. Not to be confused with my comedy troupe, the Undergroundlings, and he was there for six years before creating the iconic character Pee Wee Herman. Rubens. That's me! Okay. It sure is, Pee Wee. And from there he started the Pee Wee Herman show at the Roxy Theater. Why don't you tell us about that, Pee Wee? Rubens. Well, I, Pee Wee Herman, am a comedian, and I had a show at the Roxy Theater, like you said, that ran for five sellout months. And that got me to the big time, as it got me the Pee Wee Herman show on HBO in 1981. And I appeared in two Cheech and Sean movies. Next movie, and Nice Dreams. <laughs> okay. Okay, very good. Anyway, Pee Wee, from there you made several appearances on Late Night with David Letterman, which gave you an even bigger following. Rubens. I love going on Mr. Letterman's show. It was always a great time. And it helped out my Pee Wee Herman show. Ha <laughs> Okay. Very good. Now, the success of the Pee Wee Herman show led to the movie Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Rubens. Oh, my. That was quite an adventure I went on to get back my stolen bicycle. I had so much fun. Okay. As part of the promotion for the film, you, Pee Wee, got to host Saturday Night Live in November of 1985. Rubens. Yeah, that was so much fun. During the cold open, I walked on a tightrope between the World Trade Center buildings. Can't do that anymore. <laughs> okay, because of 9-11? Rubens. No, because I'm dead, silly. <laughs> okay, anyway, the success of your film led to CBS approaching you to create the iconic show Pee-wee's Playhouse. Rubens. Yes, I like to think the show was educational, entertaining, and artistic for kids. I always tried to be a great role model and teach kids the importance of reciprocity. Okay. Speaking of being a great role model, and I don't want to cast any aspersions on you personally, Pee Wee, but Mr. Rubens was later arrested for masturbating in a public theater. Rubens. Okay. Ah! Why are you screaming? Rubens. Because you said the secret word, masturbating. Ah! Okay. Okay, very good. Now, Pee Wee did eventually make a triumphant return. Rubens. That's right. <laughs> okay. You even got to reappear on SNL in 2011. Rubens. That's right. Me and Andy Sandberg got drunk, rode a mechanical bull. And ambushed Anderson Cooper with the chair. <laughs> okay. Very good. Now, we're running out of time, Pee-wee. But we want to thank you for being on the show. And please give our best to Paul Rubens. Rubens. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay. Pee-wee Herman, everybody.
Applause, applause, applause. Okay. That's all the time we have for this show, but tune into the next one where we interview another deceased guest. Until then, I'm Joe King, and I'm not joking.